for presentation, uh, I have one request to, uh, to make a presentation is about 50 minutes at top and five minutes for questions, okay? So thank you very much. And uh, our first presenter will be uh, Konstantinas Korovkinas with the topic SVM Accuracy and Training Speed tra Trade-Off in Sentiment Analysis Task. and uh, I want to present our paper as well accuracy and training speed trio in sentiment analysis tasks. My co-authors are Paulus Danianas and Gindotas Garshua. So SVM techniques is one of the best techniques uh, for classifying data, but uh, it has uh, slow performance in big data arrays. Uh, in this case, I mean uh, for maybe not big data arrays, but large scale of data. Uh, and in this paper, we introduce a met method how to improve the SVM classification speed by reducing training set. Uh, we also test this method on two existing data sets. Uh, they uh, they can be downloaded from internet. So the first one is Stanford Twitter sentiment corpus dataset and the second one Amazon customer reviews dataset. So propo proposed method is based on selection of a training data size sub subject to the subset of splitting testing data. Um, the testing data is split into equal, equal subset and training data size is calculated on the basis of the size of the rest subset, but uh, more details I will present uh, in diagram. Maybe. So, and uh, also we assumed that testing the subset is 30% of uh, all whole data set and training subset should be 70% 70, 70 So this is our proposed methods algorithm. Uh, where you can see uh, the training data, it, it is split in positive sentiments and negative sentiments. Um, this, this is, is subset side, so where we decide how many uh, examples we want to have in our subset. So more detail about this uh, subset side will be in experimental se session section, so I maybe I just keep this one for this time. And uh, as you can see, we uh, use this subset site uh, to calculate uh, training uh, data size, and uh, testing data is split into subsets, and all subsets are passed to SVM uh, as testing data. And we have also a set of results which uh, at the end is merged to the uh, one. So as I mentioned, uh, we, we used uh, two existing data sets. Uh, the data sets is, uh, was selected b because uh, both data sets are very uh, good for testing because we are lab labeled already, so in our case we can just test our uh, method instead of label it by hand. Um, effectiveness is measuring uh, using statistic measures like accuracy, precision, recall and F-score, uh, in other words, harmony meaning. And this is our experiment uh, settings. So, uh, first of all, uh, we have uh, performed 10 experiments. Five experiments with sentiment, uh, the Stanford sentiment uh, data set, and the second five experiments with Amazon reviews data set. Sentiment, uh, sentiment uh, the Stanford sentiment uh, data sets containing uh, about uh, 106 million, 1.6 million data. So we split it in, into training uh, 
it's 70 percent so 1.12 million and in testing data is 480 thousand uh, examples and Amazon re reviews are split in 2.8 million and 1.2 million so this this table shows uh, the ordinary experiment when we used this whole data sets uh, without our proposed method to compare it with results with our method and table two shows uh, experiments uh, of our proposed method so uh, first uh, for example in third experiment uh, we have this train training data for hundred and for 480,000 uh, data sets and subset sites we decide uh, will be 30,000. So we have 16 subsets because uh, training data is uh, 480,000 data. So we uh, how to say divide this data into 16 subsets with, uh, in four. For uh, 30,000 examples in it, and uh, calculated uh, training data for this subset is 70,000 examples, and also uh, we have uh, subset sites 60, 100, 120, 100, and 100, 80, 100 uh, size. So, and it depends on it. We also split our data sets in and calculate training data on it. Uh, this is the results uh, of our experiments, and uh, as we can see, the in in the case of accuracy uh, uh, score. Uh, we get uh, not very, uh, not the same results as the ordinary swim. It's a little bit less than, but uh, the main thing of this uh, research was to improve classification speed. So in this case, uh, we lost maybe about one percent, but uh, in, our, in another diagrams we will see what the speed was increased. So uh, this is experiment of Stanford uh, Twitter sentiment corpus data sets, and this is for Amazon as well. In Amazon, uh, we get uh, less results than ordinary SVM, but in the case of speed our method uh, get the best results in all experiments so ordinary swim for uh, sentiment analysis that I said execution execution time is uh, 407 seconds and uh, our faster method is 7.47 seconds so it's uh, I think significantly a big difference also, for Amazon, the set execution time, time is about 20 minutes. And for ordinary SVM and for our, the fastest one is 67.17 <coughs> seconds. So, experiments results show that our method is uh, characteri characterized by significantly high, higher speed than our and one an ordinary SVM. Uh, for typical use of SVM is still superior in terms of accuracy or other testing met metrics, but uh, in execution time, our method uh, is faster for standard Twitter sentiment corpus that the set is from 7.9 till 54 times faster, and for Amazon uh, from 9.8 till 15.4 five times faster than ordinary swim. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so I have two. Uh, can we return to page 10? 
10. Yes, okay. Uh, what function was used to this set where accuracy was decreased? Because in the proposed model you use some function, yes, minimize, uh, maximize. Uh, yes, yes, it was used functions, but uh, uh, it's just uh, because uh, uh, we, we run ex all experiments uh, 20 times for each each uh, subset. So we, we after that we uh, find my minimum uh, time or uh, accuracy and maximum accuracy and then we get average of this. So th this is also implemented in this uh, like uh, error bars. So this, this bar is uh, like uh, uh, average and this error bar shows maximum value and minimum value. So I just forgot maybe to okay, explain. So another question, is it possible to apply this solution to other classifiers like error networks? Uh, yes, I think uh, yes, but uh, also, we, we need to decide if it's necessary because uh, in the case of a swim, it's really slow if we r run the bigger data set on it. And for example, if you use logistic regression, it's uh, more, more uh, speedy than okay. a swim. Okay, thank you. Here is your certificate. Thank you. Okay, so our uh, another presenter is Andrea Brunello with a topic of uh, sequence classification approach to the text analysis based on decision tree. Okay. Good morning, my name is Andrea Brunello and I'm a PhD student at the University of Udine in Italy. In this talk I'm going to present you J48S, which is a novel decision tree algorithm capable of uh, also using uh, sequences to get uh, to a final classification, as for example in the case of uh, textual data. You know, sequences play typically a major role in the extraction of information from data in many domains. As an example, they can be used to track uh, the evolution of customer behaviors over time, or they can be used also in text classification, if you consider that text is basically a sequence of words. Sometimes, this uh, sequential data is also complemented by other kind uh, of data. For example, if, if you think about the medical domain, you may find a data set composed of uh, uh, numeric attributes, telling us, for example, uh, which is the age uh, and weight uh, of a patient, some categorical attributes informing us whether he's a smoker or not, uh, on his gender, and so on. And finally, of course, sequences uh, telling us a series of symptoms that the patient has uh, suffered over time, or a series of uh, medical prescriptions that uh, the doctors have administered to him. Also, of course, in some domains, understanding the classification process is as important as the final classification itself, this at least for two reasons. First of all, because before putting a model into production, it may be advisable that uh, a domain expert reads, interprets, and validates it. And secondly, by reading a, a white box uh, classification model, you may get uh, some information about the domain. For example, you may discover some regularities in the data or some properties that are as important as the final classification. In such cases, decision trees are still a very natural model to rely on because they can be understood easily even by non-IT uh, domain experts. Moreover, they can also be applied uh, efficiently both for, for training and for the classification itself. This is the reason why we present here J48S Decision Tree Learner, which is based uh, on the WECAS implementation of uh, C4.5 and on the VGen pattern extraction algorithm. The key characteristic of our proposal is that uh, the decision tree is effectively capable of mixing the use of uh, both classic attributes, such as uh, 
numeric and categorical ones, and uh, sequences. So, what are the main advantages of uh, J48S? First of all, as we will see, it is e easily interpretable for the domain expert. It can make the data preparation step uh, considerably easier because it can make use of sequences directly. For example, you can feed the decision tree directly to the text and uh, it is capable of extracting patterns without having to rely on a very long and tedious uh, preprocessing phase such as NGAM extraction. And finally, as I said, it can combine and make use of different uh, kinds of data. This is an archetypal decision tree which could be built in principle by J48S. Here in the root node you can see that uh, we have a test on a sequential attribute. We basically try to determine whether it contains the pattern AB followed by D. If it does, then we label the instance with zero. Otherwise, we go on and test on uh, some numeric and uh, nominal, nominal attributes. So, as for the modifications we made to J48 uh, to, to transform it to J48S, this is the main uh, splitting procedure used during the training phase of the decision tree. As you can see, we first evaluate uh, a classic attributes, so numeric and categorical, trying to determine their so-called normalized information gain. Having done that, uh, we proceed with sequential attributes and we extract for each sequential attribute a pattern by calling the VGEN algorithm. Again, each pattern is evaluated according to its, uh, uh, its normalized information gain. And finally, we split on the best attribute we found. Some terminology before proceeding with the presentation further. We consider I equal to I1, I2, IM to be a set of items. Then for us, a sequence is an ordered list of item sets. Here, for example, you have uh, the items I1 and I2 that occur together, followed in time by item I3, and then we have again three items that uh, occur uh, concurrently. As we will see, we are interested in the instruction of frequent patterns that are concatenation of items that frequently appear in a set of sequences, and in particular, to reduce the uh, overall number of generated patterns, we want to extract uh, the uh, so-called sequential generator patterns, which are in some sense minimal, because uh, a frequent pattern is considered to be a generator if it doesn't exist any other pattern contained in it uh, and having the same frequency. So, coming to vision, what the algorithm does is uh, recursively extracting all generator patterns from a data set. It does that in a... In a um, top-down manner, so it starts by listing all single item sets, single item patterns, and then grows them by attaching a new item set or by extending uh, an already present item set with an item. A key characteristic of, of this algorithm is that it is also capable of extracting non-strictly contiguous patterns, meaning that you can have a gap tolerance between the item set and still match a pattern against a sequence. This is very useful where, when you have noisy data. For example, if you consider text, and uh, in particular a, a text made by an automatic transcription process, you can have some noisy words and you can effectively skip them by means of these characteristics. So, as for the changes made to vision, of course, as I said, we are not interested in getting a set of generator patterns, but rather in getting uh, the, the, the most discriminative one to be used in the decision tree. So we integrated the information gain criterion inside the algorithm. Information gain, which uh, as Witten has said in the literature, can also, be extract, uh, can also be considered as a function of the support of the pattern. And this allowed us also to uh, introduce uh, a, a procedure to prune the search space of the algorithm and so to speed up its computation. Finally, for the last modification, you know, uh, sometimes getting the most informative pattern uh, might not be the, the, very, the very best idea because it may be simply too complex and too tied to the training data, so it might overfit data. So what we do is storing the best pattern in terms of information gain for each encounter pattern size, and then we extract the pattern 
at the end of the argument that minimizes the value of this formula, where W is a weight that may be customized by the user, pattern R I G is the pattern relative information gain, and pattern R length is the pattern relative length with respect to the longest pattern we discovered. What happens here? Well, uh, intuitively, the larger the user sets W, which is a value uh, comprised between 0 and 1, the longer and more accurate on the training set the extracted pattern will be, and vice versa. Of course, uh, uh, different domains require for different values of uh, W. Coming to the experimental part, uh, we apply J48S in the context of contact centers. In particular, uh, we focused on the analysis of uh, an outbound survey service. And uh, in, situ you know, in such a situation, agents typically follow a predefined script, which uh, instructs them on the phrases that they should pronounce during the conversation. And uh, a conversation is considered to be successful if an agent has pronounced all the required phrases. So we built a series of models that are capable of uh, recognizing the different uh, parts of the script by attaching uh, tags to the phrases. And this is extremely important uh, uh, for the company since it may allow to signal to the supervising staff problematic calls. In this case, the ones missing specific tags. As for the considered tags, uh, there are 12 of, the, 12 of them. For example, if we look uh, here in the table at the second row, we can see this phrase, you are retired, last question, your birth date. This phrase contains basically two tags. The first one is the age tag, meaning that the agent has asked the called the person for his age here. The other tag is profession because this phrase contains some data regarding the profession, in this case the person is, uh, is retired. And so on also for the other tags. Okay, so from the data we used, um, we relied on almost 500 distinct outbound calls which originated almost 5,000 uh, uh, text chunks, which are phrases delimited by silence poses. We divided them into a training and test uh, set for the evaluation purposes, and uh, to the text we applied some classic uh, pro processing techniques, uh, such as lowercase transformation, stemming, and we also removed the numbers and stop words because they are not uh, meaningful for our analysis task. Then, as a result, each instance is characterized by one attribute, which is the chunk transcription, and a series of Boolean attributes that tell us whether the uh, corresponding tag is present or not in the phrase. From this macro data set, we were able also to uh, derive 12 data sets, one for each tag. So, for example, for the personal identity tag, you have this situation. We have one attribute, which is the string one, and then a Boolean attribute that, in this case, tells us that the person identity tag is present here. And this is used for the training and for the evaluation of the person identity tag. Coming to the results, we can see here, mm, for, for example, by looking at precision recall, that we have quite satisfactory results. Uh, maybe with the exception of call permission, which, uh, which uh, seemed like uh, to be a, a difficult concept to understand for the model. But uh, these results were also confirmed by some other experimentations we made uh, with logistic regression models. You can see that uh, precision and recall are basically the same as before. However, to reach those results with, with logistic regression, we had to undergo a much more uh, long preprocessing uh, step because we had the first uh, to determine uh, uh, the n-gram size to be used uh, in the data set. So we had to choose, for example, among unigrams, bigram, trigrams. Then we had to choose the minimum uh, threshold for an n-gram to be included in the data set. And finally, we have also to uh, perform uh, an attribute selection step to reduce the data set to just the n-grams pertinent uh, to, each, uh, to each tag. Where, whereas, for J48S, we simply feed it the text. Okay, just to give you an idea about the decision tree which uh, has been used in this experiment. This is an example regarding the tag reaching final. 
A phrase uh, uh, that contains this tag, uh, according to the script, is something made uh, like this. Okay, we are finished. Thank you for the cooperation and good day, also on behalf of the company. If you allow me, I inform you that the company may recontact you. The decision tree that uh, recognizes this tag in an instance is made uh, like this. At the root, we test if uh, the transcription contains the pattern, in this case, the word recontact. If it does, then it also contains this tag. Otherwise, we go on and test some other uh, patterns. So if it doesn't contain thank followed by cooperation, and it also doesn't contain the word contains, then the tag is not present. An interesting thing about this decision tree is that for the company, the fact that the agent asked for the permission to recontact the cold person is, is very important because uh, according to this, uh, to this service, the, it is the final objective of the call, to get the permission to recontact the person. And in fact, the decision tree uh, understood that and put it on the, on the, really on the route as the first thing to recognize. So, in conclusion, in this work I presented the J48S, which is a novel decision tree induction algorithm capable of uh, building highly interpretable models and uh, also of directly dealing with uh, sequential data, such as uh, texts. And uh, thanks to the vision gap tolerance between the item set, it can also extract uh, some, noisy tolerant, some noise tolerant patterns. As for the further extensions, uh, we have already extended the J40S into J48SS, which stands for sequences and series, to deal also with time series data. And uh, we are thinking about how to integrate some uh, temporal logic constructs into, into the same uh, algorithm. So thank you for your attention. Okay, any questions? Please. Why really are results for the complex version much lower than for other keywords? And do you have ideas how to do it? Excuse me, the results yeah, for? There was uh, a list of keywords. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. It, it was much lower than precision recall. Twice. Yeah, yeah. With respect to the others. Well, uh, I think uh, by, by looking at least at the data, this is a, a phrase uh, which, uh, you know, the script, uh, the script tells the agent what he or she should tell during the call. But especially for this particular tag, uh, the agents tend to not pronounce that very phrase in that way, but each agent tends to personalize it to give some, uh, some, personal, some personal interpretation, as, as it is very important, because if, if a person tells you, well, no, then, uh, then you can proceed with the call. So each agent tries to convince the called person in a different way to proceed with the call. And this is the reason why, because we have some very high variability. Around this, uh, around this concept, which uh, you don't have, uh, for example, for the for the profession, because you basically ask uh, in the same way, w what do you do, wh what do you do for work, uh, and so on. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, you mentioned that uh, the uh, tag was uh, just yeah. uh, once again for introduction, because I was curious. There was oh yes, this one yeah. uh, with I I yeah. Okay. Because you say some terminology that I be a set of items and the second order list of items. And yeah. How do you divide the set of items into the subsets? The, the, you mean how? Yeah, because oh. you've got I one, this one. Two, one, two, M, and then you've got, you know, in brackets, one, two, then there's three, and there's one, two, three, and so on. Well, well so the, the, this my is question is, yeah. do you have a special uh, algorithm or uh, anything? It's just how, how, how you do yeah. the subsets? Well, the, the, this comes with the, with the data. Uh, in the case of textual transcription, which is the task that we, that we apply the algorithm to, you basically have uh, just, uh, just singleton sets because uh, you don't have words occurring together. So you don't have to, to split them. But uh, in, in cases where, where you have the situation, well, the, it is the data set that tells you what a set is because it's maybe yeah because maybe you have a sequence of uh, of things that a person have both in a store 
He has both, for example, a cake uh, together with a pizza, together with a Sprite, uh, and this is a set. Then, uh, another day, he has both uh, some other things. And then the algorithm would have uh, recovered, uh, instead of uh, word followed by another word, in principle, it would have recovered a set of uh, items followed by other sets of items. Yeah. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Here for you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Our next presenter is Jeff of Paramano with the topic of the framework for clone based picture data extraction. Dear colleagues, let me introduce our uh, presentation, TB PDF, uh, web-based system for PDF table extraction. Uh, the outline of my report it, uh, on the slide, I will, tell about, about, uh, I will tell a little about background and motivation of our research and uh, ideas about uh, text and graphic extraction, what is this and how to extract information from PDF documents. Uh, also, I tell a little about uh, performance evaluation of our approach, comparison of our approach with other uh, solutions, uh, demonstrate a little uh, 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 user interface uh, of a prototype, uh, and uh, after a slide about conclusions and uh, ideas about further works. Uh, nowadays, uh, PDF format de facto is a standard of presentation, non-editable documents, uh, especially in internet network. Uh, uh, a lot of statistical reports, financial documents, and uh, uh, scientific research uh, presented in these formats. Uh, uh, every year, created more than two and five uh, trillion uh, files with PDF, PDF format. And uh, a lot of these documents are untagged. It means that uh, this document <coughs> uh, have, has now any uh, presentation of uh, layers of information. It has any, uh, it has only uh, low level instruction for uh, printing text and uh, graphics. I, uh, I should note that I mean uh, vector graphics in these documents. And uh, if we um, uh, look for uh, scientific articles, uh, we have uh, that uh, more than 90% of these uh, articles, which pre published by four leading uh, publishers as uh, Springer, Elsevier, and so on, uh, present their documents uh, in uh, <coughs> untagged PDF formats. Uh, it means that it is easy to read uh, this document by human. It is uh, easy to print this document on printer, but it is hard enough to get uh, structure of the information. And if we want to get uh, data from data from tables, it's hard enough. Uh, uh, the example of Example of uh, low-level instruction is on the slide. So, uh, if we want to process data presented in this document, we should uh, detect tables uh, and uh, uh, segment detected tables into cells. 
now uh, approach we uh, play PDF document and extract characters position. We merge characters uh, position into words and uh, we estimate a distance between characters. We merge uh, uh, some cursor traces into rulings to estimate uh, the level of each character and uh, we merge words into text lines and merge uh, uh, text lines into text boxes. Uh, example of uh, uh, text uh, graphics extraction is on the slide. We analyze PDF documents and uh, uh, use some heuristics to get the structure. We analyze from uh, uh, left to right, from up to down. And uh, uh, also we use order of text printing by low level instruction of PDF documents. Uh, in this uh, slide presents uh, different stages of uh, page layout analysis and page layout recovery. Uh, in, in A, we have an uh, original PDF document and uh, after that we uh, collect uh, words uh, from characters position. Next we analyze text lines combined from words uh, and aggregate text blocks as paragraph and uh, we try to search uh, table areas or graphical areas between paragraphs, between textual blocks. And uh, the final stage is detection of uh, structure of uh, tables. I mean, power cells, columns, rows, and so on. Uh, we uh, search uh, uh, for any built uh, table rows from vertically connected with textual blocks and uh, build a table region from horizontally connected uh, table uh, in his uh, rows and uh, build tables from horizontally connected table regions. Uh, after that we should uh, uh, clarify table bounds by searching it may be some uh, keywords as table. It's uh, mm, only tips for us that after uh, what table we may have a table. Uh, as a result, we get bounding boxes of the tables. And uh, after that, we restore uh, this table structure. We recognize this table, uh, extract uh, uh, cells by analyzing uh, words and uh, words level and uh, characters position in this uh, uh, table. We merge each column contains only non-empty cells with uh, uh, the nearest column uh, from right to left. Uh, for performance evaluation of our approach, we use method methodology for evaluation algorithm for ten table understanding in PDF documents, uh, which uh, presented in uh, which used in ICDR table competition and uh, results of uh, performance evaluation presented on this slide. F-score is a, a general measure of uh, uh, quality data extraction, table understanding. We compare our approach with other uh, scientific and commercial software products and we have uh, on our on this uh, 
stage of our research. An average re result, it's not the best, but it's not, uh, it is not uh, uh, worse that uh, some of uh, commercial and uh, scientific products. Uh, to improve content of our approach, we created a prototype of uh, a web-based client server software. Uh, the architecture of this software presented on the slide. Uh, I should note that this temporary uh, in-memory data database, we don't collect and don't save as information of user. Uh, uh, the memory database uh, help, uh, helps us to uh, uh, process uh, 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 table information more faster. Uh, client server um, implemented as a Java application based on Spring framework. Uh, in memory database, we used uh, Apache Derby database, and uh, all uh, interactions interactions with uh, client side via RESTful API. Uh, client side implemented as a single page web application. Uh, user interface uh, presented in HTML, CSS, and semantic user interface, and rendering of PDF, which uh, used on the side of the client. Uh, made by uh, required JS and Mozilla PGF and uh, JS. Uh, interaction with uh, service side uh, via AJAX and JSON. Uh, the architecture and implementation is uh, uh, realized as open source product and uh, you can uh, see it on these links. And uh, it's a demonstration of the approach, uh, a couple of slides. Uh, firstly, we should uh, upload PDF document. And uh, after that, uh, uh, system automatically detected tables in this document. Uh, but uh, user is possible to manually correct bounds of the documents because of uh, it is uh, mm, impossible to automatically extract all kinds of data, all kinds of uh, tables, sorry. Time to time they uh, uh, are very tricky. And uh, after the automatic recognition, uh, user is possible to download result of uh, processing uh, in CSV or Excel files and uh, uh, process them. Uh, so, um, uh, a PDF file contains some extra data. Uh, uh, for example, order for printing, for cursor traces, and this uh, low-level additional information uh, can be successfully used for uh, improving the page layout analysis and table extraction from the documents. Uh, Experimental results show that uh, our uh, approach, uh, PD, TB PDF, uh, works not worse than state of the art academic and some of commercial solutions. And uh, for further work, we uh, think uh, include incorporated with uh, natural, language processing, natural language processing methods to improve uh, page layout analysis and uh, more accuracy data extraction. Uh, as well as uh, some object detection <coughs> with uh, artificial neural networks, uh, model usage for improving table detection. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. <laughs> there are a lot of PDF which uh, started, for example, text as image. It's mm. possible to recognize text uh, I think it's possible, but in uh, currently stage for our search, we don't uh, process uh, images. Uh, you also you just use ordinary PDF, which 
uh, yes, we just use yes, 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 you're right. But uh, if, uh, for example, if you use uh, target uh, PDF document, for example, if you have a Word document, Microsoft Word, and uh, save uh, it's in uh, PDF format, it will be target. Uh, uh, document. It is uh, uh, not hard to extract all data with uh, preserving of structure of the structure of this data. Uh, however, if we if you print your document via PDF printer, very often you will have uh, untagged document and you couldn't uh, extract data of this document with. Uh, um, preserving of structure, of their structure. And uh, in these steps of our research, we try to restore table structure of untagged PDF documents. Any other questions? Okay, so thank you. What is the average time to process one PDF that weight is over 100 megabytes? Uh, it's depend of uh, uh, the quantity of tables uh, but uh, it's uh, a couple of seconds. More than 10? Pardon? More than 10 or less? 10, 20 In the number? Uh, about uh, one table on documents. Yes. It's, very, it's not hard. Okay. However, uh, we, time to time, we meet with uh, tables uh, which uh, come to process with any heuristics because of it's uh, uh, not easy to understand even a human. And uh, it is very hard to generate any rules for uh, process this table. Okay. However, is, uh, if, uh, for example, uh, 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 form of table detected incorrect, uh, you can uh, manually correct bounds of the document or extract uh, subset in these documents to process them. Thank you. Okay, so our last presenter is Vidu Marshawek on the topic of uh, modification, parallelization, sort algorithm. Modification of parallelization for faster algorithm. What's in presentation, introduction, research on examine algorithm, the method, research results, theory and practice, conclusion, what's next? Uh, research topic. Analysis of sorting algorithm for large data sets. Find the best method for large data set. Apply it for, uh, 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 in a raw format. Hybrid sorting, use the fastest sorting algorithm in NoSQL database systems. Data in record will be fixed or change a length where we do not use standard mechanisms. Searching for information in NoSQL SQL basis. Linear search or binary searching in data structures, creating index B3, dedicated solution based on fast sorting application. Uh, parallel sort algorithms and big data set. A traditional way of sorting and accessing data in a database employs a raw format. However, analytics run best on a columnar format. A set of algorithms is automatically run on a, the data being stored in the memory columnar. In memory column, we can store units as shown in figure below. In memory columnar, data is fragmented into smaller units so that parallelization is possible when running a query on overall data. Parallel Random Access Machine, the most commonly used model for analysis of parallel algorithms machine prem. In practice, we distinguish between three variants of this model. The first model, the exclusive read, exclusive write prem, gives you the ability to read and write memory by only one processor. 
The second model can current treat exclusive write gives the right memory read by any processor and the right to write to at the same time by only one processor. The third model of the concurrent read concurrent write prem enables simultaneous access of all processors to computer memory. In this work will be used the second model, QPREM. Task will be distributed so that the processor does not write to the same memory space. Information which we often appears in NoSQL databases must be organized. Medical science, health information, examining phenomena, description over the year, etc. Economy, stocks, data, information about trends or trending over the year, etc. As sciences, weather forecast, climate changes, etc. Technology, examine object, behavior, description of changes in model, etc. Very uh, search. Arithmetic can mean also called expected value for an examined values objects in based on Formula One. Standard deviation of sample describe amount of information we have. In study for large data sets, we use Formula Two. Algorithm stability based describe on base of coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation is a measure that allows the determining value of diversity in examined population. It is determined by Formula Three where we use arithmetic mean one and standard deviation two. As a particular object, we understand a simple sort operation. In the examine random set and sets the example plotted result from set from uh, one, uh, 100 to 100 million elements. In each of examined uh, cardinalities, sorting tests were performed for different layouts on input. Sorting tests were performed for randomly selected 100 sequences for each cardinality. Um, what the research gives? Provides procedure dedicated for large data sets, no SQL database, and uh, examine the method in situation common in everyday practice, therefore we may increase its efficiency. Research results show that for some poses, quick sort is not effective. What's more, we can use the fast sort algorithm instead of quick sort. Parallel algorithm for merging two strings. The parallel method receives two sorted X and Y string at input and returns a sorted string Z using two processors. The first processor begins the comparison elements from the beginning of the string X and Y, inserting elements from zero index. Processors ending the comparisons on the element at index equal to half the number of elements in array Z. The first processor executes the insertion of the elements uh, uh, of the elements as is shown here. The second processor begins the comparison elements from the end of the string X and Y, starting the insertion from the index of the last elements in the array Z. The processor earns the insertion into the array Z on the element with the index greater than the number of half the elements in the array Z. The second processor executes the insertion of the element sequence Z as is shown here. For example, a process of merging two strings, x equal 5, 9, and y equal 1, 7, by processor number 0 and processor number 1 into the array z. In the first step, the processor number 0 compiles the first elements of x and y strings and insert the smaller element into the array z. In the next step, the consecutive x and y elements are compiled and the smaller element is inserted into array z. Figure below. In the first, uh, first step, processor one compiles the past X and Y element and insert the largest element of array Z. In the next step, the consecutive X and Y elements are compiled and the largest element is inserted into the array Z. Figure below. Parallel sort algorithm. In the first phase of a merger of the three strings, when using a parallel merging algorithm, strings can be divided into three processors working independently. Assign tags to the processor so that each processor will save the information in this section, in this part of a temporary array that is allocated to write for that particular processor, as shown in figure below. It is easy to see that each processor is writing to the cells it is for 
pasi bu të vrajt u të jitë. Për algoritën dhe merge dhe string stored in the temporary array, the result of the merge is stored in the input array. Way to parallelize the process of merging strings shown in figure below. Fast sort algorithm. The algorithm will merge three sequences, x, y, and z. First merge strings x and y into one string w. Next, in merge string w with last sequence of z. Theorem. Parallel fast sort algorithm using n processor has time complexity. Time max equal three second n minus three second. Have three second. In the presentation, we will skip the proof. The implementation was when examining research, algorithm was compiled as c -Shar CLR. Tests were carried out on a quad-core AMD Optron processor uh, 8356AP. In, examine of, uh, in, uh, in analysis of examining method, we are looking for solution of the best time complexity and high stability. To describe operation with the characteristic of CPU, central processor unique, clock size, uh, cycles and timing were measured. CPU clock cycle is calculated as the rate in cycles per second at which test perf uh, tested processor performs basic operations like moving values between registers. On it basis, we can es estimate performance. Execution time is the time in which CPU execute procedures. However, it can reflect not only execution of the algorithm, but also some other operation performed in the system. Uh, sorting result. These results are average for 100 sorting samples. The uh, result of sorting parallel fast sort algorithm in MS. We'll see here that we have results for one processor. We have for one processor, two processor, four processor, and eight processor uh, elements from 100 to 100 million elements. Uh, we see that it works quite well. The results for 100 start is total in TI. In fact, it is same, but uh, it is uh, calculated in cycles, processor cycles. Um, it is the diagram uh, which uh, comp uh, comparison of benchmark in MS. Uh, time is actually linear gain, task enlarged 10 times, dimension time 10 times increase. It's easy to see what it is. In this way, this is the same in TI. Uh, coefficient of variation uh, for PMF SA method. Uh, the, we see that uh, coefficient of variation is very little. Analysis and comparison of sorting time. Analysis and comparison will describe efficiency for sorting large data set. Let us compare the algorithm assuming that duration of the method using of one processor and examine if duration of action is shorter for the method using multiple processor. And it, uh, it, is, it is in TI. The studies show the MPFSA operates in shorter time measuring from task 1,000 to 100 million elements when the increase in the number of sorted elements of the effectiveness of the method of the parallelism becomes visible. What improves sorting for large data sets? The work presents the use of a, a parallel merge algorithm to merge numeric string to speed up the sorting of large data set in parallel by the fast sort algorithm. The method presented in the, this article effectively organizes large amount of data using a number of processors. The test fully confirms the theoretical computation complexity and the stability of the algorithm. The algorithm can be applied to sorting data using a limited number of processors. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, so I have one. Is it possible to apply your solution to SQL databases? 
Yes, it is possible to use it in SQL database. Yes. Have you tested it? Uh, not it. Okay. But it is always used in databases. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. And uh, thank you for your excellent chair. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I believe it's the end of our session, so thank you everyone for your presence.